Welcome back, this is episode number 14 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist link in the description. And let's get started. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to combine the Flask server and the GPIOs together in one application so that you can create a web interface to control the hardware components you have connected to the Raspberry Pi. Make sure you have watched the previous tutorial because we are going to start from there. Let's add a new URL to our web server and also connect Flask with the GPIO functionality. So what do we want to do here? I'm gonna come back to this URL. So, so the server is still working and let's say that after this, so this is the homepage, okay? If I put a slash, it's gonna be the same thing. Now after this, I want to put slash and then push, let's say push dash button. And I want to see a text that tells me if the push button is pressed or not pressed. So that's what I want. As you can see now, we have not found. Okay, so that's the 404. You might have seen this error previously, okay, on some web pages when you cannot find a page because the page doesn't exist or if you have provided the wrong URL, then you have 404 error not found. So let's implement that route. I'm going to come back to the application here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop that. Control C and let's also put the ports back to 5000 so to the default one and how to add a new route well I'm just gonna go back to a new line here and I'm gonna do app so at app dot root and then inside quotes I'm gonna do slash and this time push dash button just like that so important note is when you want to have several words don't add a space okay better to add a dash Usually for URLs, we use dashes. Then I create a function. How do I name the function? For example, push button. But you see here in Python, the convention is to use a underscore. All right, so depending on what you do, you're going to use different conventions for URLs and for Python code is different. And actually, I can name it maybe check push button and then state. All right, I put the parentheses, the colon, I go back to a new line and let's just, well, let's just return OK for now and that's it. So let's run the script. OK, let's see what we have. So now I'm not going to refresh it like this because I need to put the port back to 5000. But then if I press enter, you see we have OK. All right, so the push button URL here. Is found great and now we just need to connect the flask with the gpio how to do that it's very easy we're just gonna initialize our push button and use it inside the function so let's do another import here from gpio zero import button then i'm gonna initialize the button so i could do it before or after the app here i'm gonna do it before button is equal to and then button, I put the GPIO, which is still 26. And I'm also going to use bounce time with 0 0.05. Okay, so that's something we have seen already previously in this course. So the GPIO 26 is initialized as input for the push button. And now we can read its state. So what I can do is directly inside this function here. So I already have access to the button here inside this function. I'm going to do if button dot is Pressed. Okay, so very simple application here. We keep things minimal. Okay, it's just to show you the connection between Flask and GPIOs. So if the button is pressed, I'm gonna return uh, button is pressed, and then I can do else return button is not pressed. All right, so it's quite easy to understand. And note here that I can do actually I can simplify this a bit. Because when I do return, well, if I do return, whatever is after this line in this function is not going to be executed because we return from the function, all right? So instead of doing if this, we return that, else we return this other string. I can just remove the else here and also remove an indentation here. And it's going to be the same thing because if the button is pressed, we return that and then we don't execute the next lines in the function. But if this is not true, we just go to that line. Okay, so the result is going to be the same. It's very small optimization here. 
So let's run this and actually just before we run, I'm going to save it. So I'm going to save this file. And just to show you that what well, important thing is you could decide, okay, let's save it as flask.py. But don't do that because Flask is already a Python module. So if you save a file using a name that's already used by a module, you will have a lot of issues later on. Okay. So use something else, for example, here, web server, or you could use, for example, Flask app, something like that, but not just Flask. Okay, web server.py. Now, uh, if you want, you could run it here. I can also run it from the terminal. So let's do that just to show you that both are going to work. So let's go to Python programs and let's do Python 3 web server. And once again, you see that when we run something on Thony and then we try to run it on a terminal, you might get an error. So I'm going to close Thony. Uh, we can open it again, actually, just not run the program. And then it should be able to work. Okay. You see, we have the same warning and we also have the URL here. So let's open the browser and let's refresh this. You see the button is not pressed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the button and I'm going to refresh the page and you can see button is pressed. If I refresh again, button is pressed. If I release, button is not pressed. So it's correctly working. And you see with this example, we have treated a web application with two different routes. And we have also combined the use of Flask with the GPIOs. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching. See you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.